it's Alex, welcome to my channel and thanks for joining me today to discuss the big reveal for Frugal Frogs 2021. If you sew and you watch YouTube videos you must have come across at least one sewing vlogger talking about this challenge which is being run by uh, Sam Frugalissima and Ruan at the Yorkshire Sew Girl. They've been announcing all sorts of prizes for this challenge. The big reveal is today, the 31st of March, and I thought that I would show you what I decided to make. If you saw my video, which was all about my plans and what I was going to do, I showed you the um, Marie tunic pattern, which is a free pattern from the Fabric Store, fabricstore.com which is a linen, you know, they sell linen, so obviously it's made up in linen, a linen tunic kind of beach cover-up. And my whole thing was that by using some of the fairly simple pattern hacks that are out there on blogs from all the sewing pattern companies, there were a myriad of different ways that you could change that one pattern to look like something else. Fairly simply, completely free, and yeah, Pretty easy to do. I've done that and I don't think that my dress that I've made here looks anything like the picture of that tunic from the fabric store. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you, I really like what I made. <laughs> Obviously I made mine out of this viscose from my stash that I bought in Longsight Market with uh, Gemma, the honey dressmaker and I think this was under three pounds a meter. I bought three meters and I pretty much used all of it. I've got a tiny sliver about that big left. Um, but obviously I've made something quite big and roomy. So let me tell you all the different hacks I did. None of them were that tricky really, honestly. Um, first of all, I think I made this in a size 16. If that's wrong, I'll put it in the title below. Whatever size fitted my measurements is what I went with. But obviously, this viscose is going to behave in a very different way to um, a linen. Um, I did do the uh, raising of the neckline that I talked about in my plans video. I'll do a link here um, and also in the description box below so that you can see that because I explained how to do that because the pattern does come with a very deep V, which I think would be kind of down to here. So yeah, it would be boobs out. Um, so I raised the neckline a little bit. I also evened out the hems. So on that pattern, the front hem is a little bit shorter than the back and it also has side splits. So all I did was add five centimeters to the front, but I've added, not added or taken away from the overall length from that original pattern. And if you look at that picture, the model is actually five foot ten. So it's the the back, which is what this is, the same length that this is, uh, is sort of, I think, above her knee or around about knee length. Um, and I'm five foot seven and I think this length is fine. I thought that you might have to add more to the length, but with her being so tall, um, yeah, the length is pretty good. I added inseam pockets. Da, 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 because we don't do things without pockets, do we? And I just used the first pocket pattern piece that I had to hand, and because I've been making some of those oversized shirts, I used that pocket from the assembly line. It's relatively simple to insert an inseam pocket. There are lots of um, instructions out there to do it. There'll be a link in the description box to a blog post from, it won't be me, but from somebody else showing you how to do that. Um, I also then added some width to the sleeve and in a similar way to the blog post by Elise Vex from By Hand London, I simply took my sleeve pattern piece, made sure that I maintained the outer line at the sleeve head. I did three slashes straight through, evenly apart, and I opened them up about six centimetres, two lots of six centimetres, there'll be some pictures. Um, so I opened it up a bit. Now I wanted my sleeves to be sort of billowy and loose and I could have made it even bigger, in which case your pattern piece would almost look bell-shaped. Um, 
and I do like how that looks but I don't know how practical it is so I didn't want to go too wide and too billowy but yeah pretty easy to do in the By Hand London um, blog post there's also how to add height to the top of your sleeve if you want to do that which I didn't do so just adding across the sleeve at the bottom largely um, I pretty much turned up and put a channel in the sleeve cuff and added good old elastic. I've not made mine too tight. One thing I have had a bit of a habit of doing in the past is with um, elasticated cuffs is using my exact waist, not waist, that would really be too big, wrist measurement. Um, but sometimes that gets a bit annoying as the day goes on, it can end up being a bit too tight. So this is a little bit looser than my wrist um, but also means that if I want to I can kind of hike them up a bit and um, so I did that and then the only other thing that I did was I added a tie now I think with hindsight that my tie is too wide I made this um, 12 cent well it's 12 centimeters including the seam allowance and I kept the same seam allowance that the dress has which is a centimeter so um, this was 12 centimeters including the seam allowance and on each side and I now think that if I did it again I would just have one tie that was 12 centimeters and fold it over um, because what's happening with this is that I don't know if you can see but it and it's full width like that it seems to want to turn over um so in effect it's becoming like a turnover it wants to be the sort of five or six centimeters anyway but am i going to unpick it no i'm not and all i did was in my case i couldn't get this is sort of each side is a meter long so i couldn't get that across the full width so i did four tie pieces joined two together at the centre back, sewed them round from where that neckline curves and goes into the V. So from that point all the way around back to the other side and then joined the two pieces together, turned them inside out and then I did a bit of hand stitching on the inside. I'm really pleased with it. Oh and there's a facing on the inside. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> there's a facing on the inside which I've understitched which is why it's being well behaved and staying put. So my thinking with it was that I could either wear it like this with the ties just loose which with them being a bit fatter than I intended them to be or, or than I think they should be I think I probably will just wear them loose like this. Um, obviously I'm doing tights and my good old chunky boots right now um, but on warmer days there's no reason why I wouldn't be wearing this with bare legs. I did think that my alternative would be to tie it over so that the tie is kind of in line with the bottom of that V, um, which I might do. I don't know, I'm always telling you that I can't really tell till I see this back. Um, but the other thing that I thought to do would be to tie it so that it's more up here. And again, because that tie is so wide, you're kind of losing the open neck bit here. So I'm not so sure about that. What I wouldn't do is a bow because I'm just not a bow kind of a person. But no reason why anyone else couldn't do that. So yeah. I really, really don't think that this dress looks like that dress from um, the fabric store. I haven't tried it yet with a belt, which might be an idea, but I like things that are loose and flowy. I'm kind of a bit more comfortable like that than sort of all super tight, and I don't have much shape <laughs> in the waist. So um, yeah, I don't know that I would belt it. Maybe I would. If I had some left, maybe I could do a self belt um i might have a play with that but at the moment i'm really happy with it as it is all kind of loose and flowy and yeah i was kind of tempted to make a second dress but i've ended up with so many other projects on the go um, i've not had a chance to do it just yet but i still might because 
yeah there are lots of different options with all those different hacking blogs out there so yeah definitely would encourage you to give it a go not just looking into hacks that you can do to existing patterns but also the whole idea of looking at some of these free sewing patterns out there um, obviously this is a frocks challenge but there are patterns for pretty much anything and yeah there's so much you can do with them so sewing doesn't have to be an expensive hobby you know there are ways of getting inexpensive fabric we're always saying bedding's a good one charity shops are a good one thrift shops if you're in the US um, or go to your local market and buy some fabric for three pounds a meter like I did um, so yeah big thank you to lovely Sam and Ruan over in Yorkshire for hosting this challenge really really interested in seeing what everyone else has done if you have perhaps been inspired to do something based on some of the free hacks there are out there please let me know in the comments and if you fancy subscribing that would be fab and i will be back very very soon i hope some of you might win the challenge and some of the fab prizes that would be really good all right speak to you soon bye bye